summer was the all Australian kid, you know, on the trampoline, with the knickers on, with the hose in the air, you know, full of mud, looking for worms, you know, whatever. She, she was a tomboy. She was a very caring girl and, yeah, she, she was very, very active, very active. Summer Steer became the first Australian to die after swallowing a lithium button battery. She will be fine, is what a mother remembers being told by doctors the day her little girl died. If an emergency x-ray had been taken, doctors would have known she was a walking time bomb. So I took Summer to the doctor because over a two week period she had dark poo and I was worried about it and I got a diagnosis of Giardia. So I thought everything was going to be okay. She was still playing, she was still drinking, eating, she was mucking around with her brother. Even the night before, she was riding up and down the driveway, she was laughing, carrying on, we built a cubby house. She seemed fine. It's been revealed a button battery that killed a little Sunshine Coast girl could have been stuck in her throat for a fortnight. I called triple zero at, uh, it was just after 12 o'clock, um, because Finn woke me up and said, um, someone's got a blood nose. And I stood up, I saw a blood on Summer just above her mouth. I went into the kitchen to get something to help clean her up and then Finn said, she's vomited blood. The ambulance came and went into the hospital and she was examined by a doctor there and they kept us in. Um, uh, but the doctor at the time was confident that it was um, about a blood nose. So they sent us home. Um, he thought she'd from the blood nose, she'd swallowed the blood and then vomited that up. But when we got out, waiting for the taxi to go home, Summer vomited blood out front of the hospital and quite a large amount. Uh, we went back in, someone came and picked her up um, from out front of the hospital, uh, took her back in and we stayed there till six o'clock in the morning. In that time, Summer had either vomited blood and slept, vomited blood and slept. I wouldn't say she seemed okay. We were discharged and I, uh, he, the, he, the doctor said, I think she's gonna be all right. So we went home and um, Summer slept on the lounge. I said, we've all had a big night. There was blood all over my house. Uh, but I said, okay, we've all, none of us have slept. And so I just covered it up with towels and said, okay, let's just rest. Uh, Finn watched cartoons. I lied on the lounge with Finn. Summer laid on the other lounge. And then it was, I think, eight o'clock. Um, Summer just stood up, projectile vomited bright red, bright red blood and then just collapsed on, on the ground. So immediately I said to Finn, grab the phone. I picked Summer up and Finn gave me the phone. I rang AAA and said, it's happened again. And I took Summer out the front to meet the ambulance because I was, I just wanted it to happen quickly. And um, they said, have you, where have you got Summer? And I said, she's over my shoulder. And they said, okay, put her down, turn her on her side. Can you hear a heartbeat? Can you hear a breathing? I said, I can hear a heartbeat. Oh, God. Okay. And I said to Summer, can you hear me? Uh, Summer, can you hear me? And she went, yes, Mum. And I said, okay, she's breathing. She's breathing. And I said, but please hurry up because I, I think she's dying. Then we got to the hospital and um, they said, this is Summer Steer. She was here last night. There was a different doctor and 
She took action. She took um, bloods. Uh, they got her on IV fluids. And she was still vivid. Um, she was still talking. And uh, the doctor was on the phone um, to another hospital. And that's when they um, ordered the uh, chopper to come. And and when the chopper arrived, that's when Summer threw up blood again. So they anaesthetised her and uh, put an ET tube down to have her on oxygen so that she was stable. And then they took an X-ray to see that the ET tube was sitting in the right place and that's when the battery was discovered. After that, um, all the doctors looked and said, yes, it's a battery, but it's OK. We can go to Brisbane now and we'll just have it taken out. They didn't realise the effects that it was going to have. So I, I was relieved, the doctors were, were relieved. We thought we could just go to Brisbane and have it taken out. Uh, then Summer and I got in the chopper. Summer had a couple of blood, blood transfusions and I was about halfway down. I, I looked at Summer and she had blood coming out of nose and her mouth. And they said, it's OK, it's OK. And when we got there, there was a team of people um, that we wheeled Summer into. They were rushing into surgery and one of the paramedics stopped me and said, it's OK. He turned me around and said, it's OK. And I went, yep, it's OK. They're just taking out. And he said, yeah. Then we kept walking. It was probably a metre or so later. He stopped me again and turned me around and said, it's OK. And at that stage I thought, OK, there's something wrong. And I turned around and Summer was being resuscitated. And... Uh, then she went into surgery and I still thought if she was going to come out OK. And I had one of uh, a lady surgeon come out and said, I just need you to know it's going to be a long shot. And I remember saying, what do you mean? You, you just have to take it out. And she said, no, I need you to know it's a long shot. And I said, she's strong. And she said... It's a long shot. They called Brad and I into a conference room and I think there may have been about ten doctors come in and I was still, you know, stupidly hopeful and um, they said, OK, you know, we need to tell you something and Brad... Summer's dad said she's dead, isn't she? And um, they said yes. And at that stage, I, well, I lost it, of course. I just started punching myself in the head, just going, no, no, no. And um, we broke it up and we cuddled each other. And, and then, um, uh, we got to see Summer. Um, uh, they took us into the room where she was and uh, we held her. I just held her and rocked her and said, come on, come on. I've actually lost a lot of friends, which you'd think be unbelievable, but um, I think because people don't know what to say, so after a while they think, well, you've got to get on with it. Well, you can never get on with it. We never knew where the battery came from. They searched... Um, my house, they searched the kindy, they searched um, mum's house because Summer and Finn had been there. It could have been off the street, it could have been in a shopping centre, it, it could have been anywhere. 
could have been anywhere. We have no idea where it came from. The main thing out of Summer's death is we don't want this to happen to anyone else. Because once they put that battery in their mouth, and they do kill. And if they don't, they cause just horrible, horrible injuries. And manufacturers need to realise how much damage they're causing. They need to be screwed down. They need to make them much safer. I see little girls and I think that should be my little girl. I've, um, sorry. I've lost her future.